Hey guys and girls, hope y'all are good and well. Um, Pixel Logic has done it again. They did it. They did it. They released a new lightweight version of ZBrush and it's called ZBrush Core Mini. Right, if you guys want to get a hold of the software, I've left the link down in the description below. Um, and it's free, which is nice. However, it's not the same ZBrush that you know, love and fear, right? This is this is a whole new different beast. You can first start on the right side of the interface where you realize that we only have eight brushes that are packed into the software. We only have eight mat caps that we can switch uh, in between. And we have a limited, you know, color palette range. And by that, I mean, I cannot um, assign the color to the shader, okay? Because I don't have an option for a subtool palette this side. So your subtool palette, your layers, your noise modifiers, um, Z spheres, you know, all the good juicy goodness has been taken out of this. And there's a reason why they did that, right? One of the main reasons they did that is to make this as approachable as possible. Um, let's just say that you haven't sculpted and you've been hearing a lot of stuff about ZBrush and you've seen the high quality stuff um, that ZBrush has created or that are created using ZBrush and now you just want to get your your hands on it but it's quite expensive and maybe the trial version isn't as fulfilling because you you have a life you have things to do then zbrush core is for you zbrush core mini that is so you'll notice with the brushes they already have um the the sculptress mode activated and what sculptress mode is is that um whenever i sculpt right i don't I don't stretch my mesh or I don't exhaust my mesh, right? It creates the mesh whilst I'm still um, sculpting. And this is nice because if I should ever get to a point where um, my mesh is too dense, then what I can do is I can come to these three buttons and I can lower it to a desired poly count. So it's very cool. And the reason they did this is because you cannot manually subdivide uh, your mesh. Because in ZBrush, if you wanted to subdivide your mesh, you have to go to geometry and then go to mesh, subdivide. Well, that feature is no longer here. So this means that you are now um, sculpting on the go, sculpting on the fly. I kind of like that because now it gives me less to think about and I can just focus more on what I am creating. Don't ask me what I'm creating now, I have no idea. Uh, I'm just doing this in, in the interest of um, the tutorial. <laughs> so what else is cool about um, this ZBrush feature is that um, instead of, you know, hitting your spacebar and adjusting the sizes of your brushes. You can still do it with the shortcuts on your keyboard or you can come right here where it says draw size and you can go and shrink it and you can play with your Z intensity as well. Z add and Z sub, right? You can't manually select them again. All you have to do is press alt and you're in Z sub mode and by default you're in Z add mode. So it, it takes kind of getting used to, but this won't be a problem if you haven't sculpted before. So is this ideal for a beginner who wants to get into sculpting? Absolutely, it is. And the reason I say that is because of the minimal interface, all right? You already have um, the bare minimum and I believe it is more or less the essentials that you need um, to get the creative juices flowing without worrying about breaking something or or messing around with a setting or something like that. So 
Yes. It is. But not for me. Alright, because I have been... Um, I've been sculpting for quite a while now. And it's... It's a bit of... You know, a gear shift. Because now, instead of being spoiled for choice with brushes or making my own brushes, I don't have the option to do that. So clearly this is aimed at beginners. You know, I can't make or alter my matte caps. I don't have um, the luxury of playing around with the lighting on my model. And even the way you save your files is quite different. And I'll show you how to do that now. So let's say for the sake of this example, I'm happy with the character and, you know, like the initial concept stages, what I've done with it. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to go up here to the folder where it says save project as. And when I click on it, right, you already see that I have um, two other previous projects and then we can also check out the file types as well. So you can save it still as a ZBrush uh, project that you can open into ZBrush. And then you can save it into uh, an image 3D PNG, uh, which when you view with your normal photo picture viewers, is just a flat 2D image. But when you bring it into ZBrush or when you give it to someone else that has ZBrush called Mimi, it brings in all the sculpting information in there as well so that's pretty cool so it's the same with the PNG and the GIF as well so I'm just going to select um, PNG then I have my caps lock on there we go now I'm gonna hit save so one other thing that you can do as well is that if you are planning to like 3D print and stuff like that or you are cross-platforming, meaning that you started it here on a ZBrush Core Mini and you want to take it out to maybe Maya or Blender or 3D Studio Max, 
then what you can do is you can save it as an OBJ by coming up here. So it says export for 3D printing and you can just name it whatever you want and then it will save it as that OBJ. So even if you are maybe going to 3D print your stuff as well. So look, all in all, um, you can't use masking as well. Um, you can't view your undo history, which, you know, is, is, is a bit annoying for me. Um, you can't record time-lapse videos on this and you don't have the luxury of using layers. So it is, like I said at the beginning, it's quite, it's quite stripped down, but you can, you know, have fun and, you know, get, get wind of the basics if you haven't, um, if you haven't sculpted before. So yeah, in closing, if you haven't sculpted before, right, if you haven't, if you haven't used ZBrush before, if you haven't sculpted before and you want to get into it, then this is something that I will recommend because a lot of distractions uh, have been removed. Not to say that there are necessarily distractions, but um, I believe that when when you want to learn something, it's really good to keep things as simple as possible. And ZBrush Core Mini um, has followed through on that. All right, I just picked this up while wrapping up um, the recording. That's why I slotted it in. Uh, you cannot exceed a million polys, at least with this uh, version of ZBrush Core Mini. It will ask you to reduce the mesh or upgrade to another package. So it appears that they have um, also capped the amount of poly counts that you can achieve um, when you are working within ZBrush Core Mini, which I, I mean, once again, if you're a beginner, you know, um, I guess they thought, what the hell are you doing with over a million polys, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's something to also look out for as well. And also in, in the instance of it uh, impacting your hard drive, I have recorded a video on how to um, divert your sculpt history from your C drive to possibly another hard drive you might have hooked up onto your system. Um, I'll link the video in um, the description down below as well. So yeah, um, if you wanna check out the software, um, they have their own designated website and then you just have, you just need to have a Pixelogic ID because the license is free. That is how you will activate the license. So the link to this is in my um, description down below. And thank you so much for watching the video. Happy sculpting.